Hello everyone, welcome to this brief introduction into the world of Pixera. My name is Reiner and I'm training a trainer and project manager at AV Stumpful and I will try to give you a good overview of all the basic functionality of the software in the next minutes. Good, let's dive right into the topic. Pixera consists of three programming tabs. There is the screens tab, which you can see right here, which will also open up whenever you start the software. Then there is the mapping tab and last but not least, the compositing tab. Each tab covers a separate feature set of the software, which should in general help with the overview as well as the learning curve when first starting out with the software. Okay, before we start out with the screens tab, let me explain you some of the basic workflow principles in Pixera. So one thing which is similar for each tab is general arrangement. You will always find on the left side your library. In the middle, you will always find your workspace and on the right hand side, you will always find your inspector. And the workflow always supports selecting something in your library, drag and dropping it into your workspace. And then on the right hand side, you will see all the details in the inspector. For the screens tab, you will find in the library displays as well as the LED panels and projection screens. For the mapping tab in your library, you will be able to find the big project database all projects that manufacturers are in here with all the available projectors and all the different lenses. Furthermore, there were also live tabs, which is basically the tab where you find all your Pixera machines, the playback machines, as, as well as the director control machines. Last but not least, in the compositing tab, it is similar, but a little bit different. On the left hand side, in your resources, uh, you will find all the content which you have added to the project or also the standard content. Pixera also, also comes with five standard videos which you will be able to try out immediately. On the right hand side, similar to the two other tabs, you will find the inspector with all the information. And additionally to the workspace, which you can see right here, you will also find the timeline. Well, good, let's get back to the screens tab and let's take a look on how you can import stuff to your workspace. On the left hand side, you can find your library and I will now choose a screen and here I will go for a generic flat screen, a projection screen. And in order to import something into your workspace, all you have to do is just drag and drop it from the left into the workspace. Now, when you select something in the workspace, you will immediately get the inspector displayed with all the information. So there is a canvas resolution, the resolution of your screen, wall transformation, which you can, of course, modify in here. You can put in values by hands. Uh, you can also uh, use mathematical functions so I can add two meters here, for example. And everything here is in meters, as you can see. There is also intelligent snapping. So let's just copy and paste the screen real quick. And once I hit shift, I can now snap between uh, those two screens and also add values directly in here in our workspace. Now let's get back to our single screen and let's start to modify it a little bit more. Let's change the size, for example. So all you have to do is just use those arrow keys here, which will allow size modifications on the screen. 
So let's say we want to go for a two projector setup. So let's go for something like this. In the next step, we want to add projectors to our setup. And this is done in the so-called mapping tab. On the left hand side, you can find our big project database with all available projector manufacturers and it includes all of the available projectors on the market. I have already added two projectors to my favorites. So these are two Panasonic projectors and you can immediately see here some information like the resolution as well as the brightness of the projector. So let's start and drag and drop one of these into our workspace. Now you can see the first hint that we actually have been working all the time in a full 3D environment. Depending on the setup, however, you can choose to not work in 3D. A lot of standard setups, they don't require 3D placement of objects. A lot of times you're just dealing with more or less 2D projection. So therefore it is also possible in Pixera to actually deactivate and hide the frustrums. And now I'm able to work with this uh, projector in a more or less simple 2D manner, like you would uh, have experienced it in more traditional media server software. <clears throat> Of course, for this setup, for it in order to work, I also need to use a second projector. Of course, I could now copy and paste my projector and place them accordingly. Um, however, there is a more easy method of doing so. There is an auto alignment setup baked into the system, which will help you dealing with setups like these. All I have to do is just select my projector and here on the top, you can choose the auto transform editor. If you require a different lens for a setup though, it is suggested to change lens settings before. On the right hand side, you can find your inspector and in here you will be able to find all the projector sensitive options. So there is the warp, soft edge and marker for marker calibration. And if we scroll down on the warp option, we can find some more settings. And down here, we can also find the lens properties and in here we can change and choose from the various different lenses. There is also a scroll, uh, an option for fur ratio as well as lens shift, vertical and of course horizontal. Now let's get into our auto alignment, which you can access up here. Now here's some options you can choose from. There is a preview. If you activate that, the system will get or will transition in an active preview state. And now what I can do here is I can tell the system how many projectors I want to use. And I can also change my overlap settings. And as you can see, as I do so, the system will automatically in real time adjust my projectors. So let's say let's go for something like 15% overlap. This looks like a clean setup. And I hit apply and my projectors have been placed automatically for me from Pixera. We can also activate with the grid now for the first time and change the viewport so we can see we are actually working in a full 3D environment. When it comes to warping, of course, there are also lots of different options you can choose from in Pixera. I've already prepared a small imaginary warping here. And for a better overview, what you can do, you can just flip over your setup window and put it into the workspace to get more uh, space for your warping configuration. 
What is really cool is you can even add additional modifier stacks to your warp mesh. So I did just add another FFD modifier and I'm now able to resize my FFD grid and reposition it on the mesh. And as you can see, I can now modify and manipulate only this part of my mesh without influencing the rest of my mesh. Now, before we dive into compositing, I would like to show you how to work with LEDs in Pixera. In the Screens tab, besides projection screens and displays, you can also find the LED database. Uh, so let's just open it up here. And as you can see, there are all manufacturers available in here. As the LED market is growing really fast, of course, there could also be the possibility that you're using a brand new LED, which is not yet part of the database. Therefore, we also included a generic one, which allows you to handcraft the LED you have in use. Good, let's start and put in an LED. Let's go for example for a black Onyx 5. The LED setup in Pixera works in a way that you will always start with a single panel and then you can create in the inspector a panel array. So I've got now my single black Onyx LED tile in here. And now within the panel array, I can now choose the size I am going to use. So let's go for example for a seven by five. And as you can see, Pixera will immediately create for you the correct panel size as well as correct panel resolution. It is also possible to add a radius plus and minus of course to your LED in case you're running a curved LED setup. Good, let's just copy and paste this LED panel. There we go. And let's start with compositing. Now, starting with compositing, I guess one of the first steps you want to do a lot of times is import your own content. In case you just want to try out the software for the first time, Pixera comes with some standard content which you can use right out of the box. So if you want to try out some features, you don't have to bring your own videos just to try out some stuff. Now, let me go ahead and import some videos. So all I have to do is just drag and drop them in here and Pixera will automatically copy the folder structure which you are using in Windows. As you can see, one of the videos is also a picture sequence. Pixera is highly optimized for picture sequence playback and can playback the best quality picture sequences available. The biggest systems can playback up to 8K 10-bit full 444 color sampling uncompressed in TIFF or DPX sequences, for example. So I will just hit here, yes, and now I've got this video imported as a picture sequence. Now, down here, I can now find my videos. So let's just start and import uh, some videos to my project. All I have to do is just drag and drop the videos on my screens. And also with the click of a button, I can immediately change the scaling. In my example here from fit to fill, in order to fill out my screen. Now, what is really awesome in Pixero's compositing is that everything uh, can be done in real time. As you can see, I can do adjustments during playback without influencing or stopping playback at all. Let's just add another video right here and one clip right here. Now, if you remember, we are using different pixel densities here in this setup. I've got a projection screen in the middle, which has 3,500 by 1080 pixels and two LEDs on the side, which are roughly 700 pixels by 500 pixels. 
even though we are using different pixel densities and um, pixel pitches basically in our setup, we can still go ahead and animate and drag and drop content amongst all these three screens without any further influence of the user. So it's now quite easy for me to just create a keyframe animation from this video going from my left LED to my right LED. Let's quickly fade this out here so we can actually see the video. And by adding some keyframes to my video here, as you can see, I can quite easily create an animation of my video transi transitioning from my left screen through the middle screen to the right screen. Of course, there are many more features you can look forward to when working with Pixera. From importing big 3D venues into your workspace, to working with exhibition setups and projector studies and pre-visualization for the setups. And of course, there are also lots of different possibilities and capabilities for 3D mapping applications. And of course, there are also lots of new additions coming to Pixera's expanding feature set this year. We are working on lots of user interface improvements as well as our media control software, Pixera Control. Either as a fully integrated tab as part of any Pixera master or as a standalone unit, Pixera Control will offer a powerful feature set for your shown control needs. Inside Pixera, it hosts an environment that takes complete advantage of all of the Pixera API functionality. It comes with a user interface builder, a library for third-party devices, and all the modules you'd expect for arranging, routing, and restructuring control data. Also coming soon, we're going to introduce the all-new Pixera Micro, which is a small single-output hardware unit. We are also expanding our ever-growing third-party integration list and you can look forward to new integrations like Backoff. And there are also lots of new features coming for 3D engines, Notch, Unity and Unreal, which you can, by the way, see here running in the back in this video. And I hope you are looking forward as much as I do for all of these new awesome features. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you did enjoy our small tour through the world of Pixera. And I wish you a great and safe time. Thank you.